Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about painting white objects. Because I think all of us have a similar experience. When we were young, we thought about things in terms of those colored markers. You know, green, that's for grass. The sky is blue. Well, dinner plates and clouds are white. As a painter, though, you're going to come to realize that this is a bit of an oversimplification. In fact, it's really not very useful at all. So painting white objects tends to be especially tough for beginners, because what you're doing is you're battling this early conditioning. And what you need to be doing is reminding yourself to paint what you see, not what you think you know. This is why we paint from observation while we're learning, because it forces us to compare the art that's on our page versus what we're actually looking at. And when you see that there's a big difference, that's where you need to improve it. So in general, white is a color that you're not going to be using very much in your paintings. Pure white, after all, is going to be the brightest value on your entire canvas. So if you look at this photo, for example, there is only a tiny little bit of pure white. Now I could ask you, what color is this paint? And you'd probably reasonably say white. In truth, though, it's really only these tiny little glossy reflections that are actually pure white. Now what this means is that every other value in the image is going to be a little bit lower. So the midtone, the core shadow, the reflected light, all the other parts of this rendered white material are not actually pure white. And more than just being darker, they're also going to be colored. So even though this is a white painted object, it is going to be much more colorful than you might imagine. And the color can come from a few different places. One place that it can come from is the overall color temperature or tint of your image. So this example here has a very warm tint to the entire painting. But when you look at it in the sort of color world of this painting, you can still tell that the table is a different color than the ball. But either of them, if you were to use the eyedropper tool and sample that, is going to have a little bit of warm in the color. It's not grayscale. So taking a quick few samples here, you can see that the white ball has a lot of different colors. So when you have a color temperature image like this, the entire image has sort of a global warmness to it. Now another way that white can receive color is from reflected light. And where this happens is when your objects are really near one another and there's direct light bouncing around. So here I've got a blue table and a white ball. And where you see this reflected light having a little bit of blue coloring, that is not an overall tint like in the previous example. It's really localized to this one little spot on the ball. Well, this is bounce light. So there's light coming in, bouncing around the room, and then it comes down and hits the blue table and bounces off and brings with it some of that color. So then when it bounces onto the white ball, it actually colorizes that reflected light a little bit. And that's going to change the hue of the ball because the ball has a local color of white. It does not have any hue on its own. So as you can see here, with bounce light and general image tint, white is almost never just pure white. There's a huge range of values and hues, all adding up to a carefully rendered form. And hopefully this has made it a little more clear why it's so important to be practicing with observational painting and drawing. Because like I said, we grow up being told that clouds are white. So is the snow. And that's really a disadvantage when it comes to learning painting. The more you practice from observation, though, you're going to replace these early stereotypes with an actual understanding of what you're seeing. And that's how you become a really great painter. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.